It's the age-old question. Is the storage capacity on the base model Max enough, or should you pay more to upgrade it? Well, the answer has changed quite a lot in the last 12 months, and spoiler alert, if you truly don't need extra storage, don't bother. But if you think you might, then there are actually several really important factors that you should consider before making a decision. Let me explain. Quick thanks to Odoo for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Now, I've been buying Macs for over 10 years, and not once have I ever bothered to upgrade the internal drive to a larger capacity than whatever is offered in the base model. I mean, sure, look, I struggled a little bit with the old 128GB SSD MacBooks, but it was never really a massive issue for me. It was enough for the apps I used every day, some files, and also some movies every now and then. And don't forget about cloud storage either, which is a really easy way to free up some space on your computer. And if I ever needed more physical storage, well, that's where an inexpensive external drive came in. And I actually made my very own super cheap and super fast external SSD that cost a fraction of what Apple would have charged to upgrade. And this is something I've actually recommended most people do if they want to save a boatload of cash. So I will link that video down below. But like I said before, my opinion on this has changed slightly in the last 12 months. Starting with the most obvious reason, speed. The SSDs on the M1 Max are blazing fast, particularly on the more recent Apple Silicon Max with the M1 Pro, Max, or Ultra chips. Now, the base storage options are quite fast, but when you upgrade the SSDs, the speed also increases with each upgrade tier. Typically, you will see those max speeds that Apple advertises on their website only on the four terabyte and larger options. Take my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook with a four terabyte SSD. Just look at those crazy read and write speeds. Now, this speed has a number of benefits. Transferring and reading large files is faster. If you're a photo or video editor, the experience is much snappier. And you also see a general performance boost across your entire system due to a feature called swap memory, but more on that later. Now, most people believe that simply buying an external SSD is much better value than upgrading the SSD in your Mac. But is that still true? Well, if you're just after a big chunk of storage and you don't need anything too fancy, there are a number of inexpensive options out there. I mean, you have the Samsung T5 SSD, you also have the old school, old school uh, mechanical hard drives, and sure, options like that are going to save you a ton of money. Even more so if you have a desktop Mac. Most people don't mind having an external drive plugged in all the time. But don't forget about speed, quality, and convenience, especially if you have a MacBook. Starting with speed, you simply cannot get anything that comes even remotely close to the sheer speed of the upgraded internal Mac SSDs. For reference, one of the most premium and high-performing external drives out there is the Rocket XTRM-Q from Sabrent. Now, I have the 4 terabyte version, it's great, but it's almost as expensive as simply upgrading your Mac's SSD to 4 terabytes. It's only half as fast, and you have to carry it around with you. So when you examine the trade-offs a bit closer and consider the external drive alternatives and your budget, of course, those SSD upgrade options on the Apple website may not be as outrageous as you might have initially thought. And just before we move to the next section, a quick word from the sponsor of this video. Odoo is an open source business management software that provides businesses with tools to operate. The Website Builder app allows you to create your very own website for free with hosting and customer support also included. You also get a personalized domain name free for one year and Odoo is 100% free for an unlimited number of users if you only install one app. Odoo allows users to configure and manage a website quickly and efficiently. This is made possible by these simple tools and user-friendly interface. There's no need to code, just drag and drop pre-made, fully customizable building blocks into a pre-made theme, and get smart suggestions of design and color combinations with Odoo's artificial design intelligence. Plus, gain access to millions of royalty-free photos and illustrations, and enjoy a fully integrated live chat where you can converse with website visitors and turn them into leads and customers. You'll also be able to measure the effectiveness of your campaigns with tracked links. So check out Odoo's website builder using the link down below. 
Okay, getting back into the video, let's now talk about something called swap memory. Swap memory is actually an ingenious solution to make your computer faster. It's existed for a very long time and is used on almost all operating systems, including Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. Its purpose is to move processes and programs that aren't currently being used out of physical memory, which is your RAM, and onto virtual memory, which is essentially just temporarily writing this data to your SSD. It's kind of like a builder moving a tool from his hand to his tool belt. It's still close by if he needs to use that tool again, but it's not as fast as having that tool already in his hand ready to go. Likewise, on your computer, swap memory frees up RAM and allows your computer to multitask and just crunch data faster than it otherwise would be able to. But this process does have a few side effects. Firstly, your SSD is nowhere near as fast as your RAM, even those super fast upgraded SSDs that I mentioned earlier on the newer M1 Max. Although their increased speed will still increase performance significantly when compared to a base model SSD. Secondly, swap memory writes data to your SSD. How much data do you ask? Well, back in 2021, some of you guys might remember, especially if you've been a fan of this channel, uh, there were a number of reports going around that Apple Silicon Macs were writing terabytes and terabytes of data every single week to their internal SSDs. Now, this has mostly been debunked, including by myself on this very channel, but I have heard of a few edge cases where people were writing hundreds of terabytes of data a year to their SSD, mainly from swap memory usage, which macOS seems to employ more regularly than other operating systems. This is often due to having insufficient RAM in your system. For example, if you should have upgraded to 16 gigabytes of RAM, but you just stayed with eight gigabytes, but we will discuss that a little bit later on. Firstly, let's talk about how writing tons of data to your SSD might actually shorten its lifespan. As you already know, the SSDs on Apple Silicon MacBooks are soldered. That is, they cannot be removed. Now on the Mac Studio, it does appear as if you can replace the storage module inside, but again, you're kind of at Apple's mercy as to whether or not they will actually replace it for you if it does die. And don't forget, as a consumable product, your SSD will eventually die. And one of the biggest contributors to a dead SSD is usage, writing data to the SSD. Now, I made a video a while ago going into detail on this topic. Spoiler alert, your SSD is most likely going to last a very long time, probably longer than however long the Mac itself will. And I will link this video down below so you can find out exactly how long your SSD will last. But if you're someone who writes a ton of data to your SSD, or maybe you work with a ton of video footage, or you don't upgrade your RAM and use a lot of swap memory, it is possible that you might wear it out faster than expected, especially if it's one of the smaller capacity SSDs. This is because smaller drives have a correspondingly smaller TBW, or terabytes written value, which is essentially how many terabytes you can write to a particular SSD before it might start to have issues or have a greater risk of failure. For example, if you upgrade your max SSD to one terabyte instead of the 256 gigabyte option, you are quadrupling your TBW, which means in layman's terms, your one terabyte SSD should be able to write four times as much data as the 256 gigabyte SSD before possibly developing issues. Again, I explain this in much more detail in that SSD video I mentioned earlier. Just data writes alone are only one of several contributing factors to SSD lifespans. Now, of course, any component can fail at any time, which is why having a proper backup is so important. Google the 321 backup rule if you're interested in learning more. Finally, it's time to talk about the most important factor in my opinion, and that is convenience. Now, if you are someone who knows they're going to regularly need more storage capacity than what the base model options can provide, maybe you're doing video or photo editing or you just wanna store a lot of data on there, uh, do yourself a favor and just get the bigger SSD. Of course, if your budget can allow for it. Uh, now, on my personal machine, I have a 16 inch M1 Max MacBook uh, with a four terabyte SSD. 
Yes, I cringed really hard at the checkout on the Apple website when buying it, uh, but four months later, it's been worth every single cent. No more forgetting my external drive at home or at work. No more cables and drives dangling off my computer 24 seven. Insane read and write speeds. And it's just so nice being able to dump or download all my data into my Mac and forget about it. Sure, I mean, there are advantages to an external SSD. They're generally much cheaper and can be kept even if you sell or lose your Mac. But for me, again, the ease of use is something I can never go back from. Personally, I keep a ton of B-roll footage permanently on my Mac, as well as all current media projects I'm working on. Once I'm done, everything I want to keep from that project is transferred to my 100 terabyte NAS. And over three to five years of plugging in external drives and whatnot every single day, uh, that extra couple of hundred bucks is a drop in the water, at least for me personally. Like guys, I understand that, you know, upgrading SSDs is a lot of money. So this is only if you can afford it, uh, because again, most of you guys are probably going to be fine with the base model option. Okay, so should you upgrade the RAM or the SSD? Well, that's its own entirely separate video. In fact, multiple other videos to answer that question. Uh, and you're not gonna like what I'm about to say, and that is that it depends. I mean, there are hundreds of workflows out there and it really is specific to what exactly you're going to be using this computer for. So it's impossible for me to sum up succinctly in just a few sentences in this video. One thing I will mention though, is that if you don't have sufficient RAM, depending on how intense your workflow is, of course, it will result in increased reliance on swap memory, which slows down your system and also writes lots of data to your SSD. So my advice is to upgrade the RAM first. Do your research, find out roughly how much RAM you think you're going to need. There's a ton of videos out there, including multiple on this channel. And you need to find out if the base model amount of RAM is enough. If it is not enough, upgrade your RAM first before considering SSD upgrades. Using the M1 Pro MacBook, for example, that starts at 16 gigabytes of RAM, the vast majority of people will be fine with 16 gigabytes, so they can instead put any extra budget towards the SSD. Apart from that, guys, hopefully you found this video interesting and or helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one.